Good morning and welcome to our weekly digital worship. I'm Pastor Joel Kui and it's a joy to worship with you on this last day in the month of May. Although you are there and I'm here, the Holy Spirit's holding us all together. Hey, this is a leap year. And with all the commotion around the coronavirus this spring, I totally forgot about that. In a sense, we leaped right into the pandemic. It's been three long months, but God's been so faithful and you've all been so prayerful as well. Praise God. As you notice, I'm wearing my new threads. It's summertime, time to wear the uh, holiday and uh, Hawaiian shirts. And so I invite you to wear them as well. Please join me now for today's wisdom recitation as we begin our worship service with the word of the Lord. This morning, we're gonna be reading from Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Our service now continues with our opening song. Please join me. Let us confess. God of grace and mercy, we confess in this time of pandemic 
we have sinned against you in our thoughts and actions. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have trafficked in attitudes whether to mask or not to mask. We have failed to consider those who have been most affected by the virus. Forgive us and lead us to your cross. And let's take a few more moments of personal confession. Hear now the forgiveness. Dearly beloved, hear the good news. Jesus has taken your sins upon his body and died for you and the entire world. As a called and ordained pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I announce unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. Our service now continues with the reading of today's lesson. Good morning. I'm Lisa Ricken Kassler, Director of Congregational Life at Prairie Lutheran Church. Today's reading begins in Genesis 1, verse 26. The creation story describes humankind as having dominion over all that God has created. We have the responsibility to nurture our relationship with God and one another and we are called to care for creation and protect it. Today's reading is from Genesis 1, beginning at the 26th verse. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit and seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And so it was. God saw that all he had done, and it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from the work of creating all that he had done. Sense the reading. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. What is your favorite thing that God created? I think my favorite thing that God ever created was kitty cats. I have a cat at home that I just love. Well, if you don't know what your favorite thing God created was, our Bible story today talks about a whole bunch of things that God created. He created the fish in the sea. He created our oceans and the lakes we swim in, the birds in the air that fly, and even the flowers and the trees in your front yard but he created something else that's even cooler. He created me and he created you and he made us all different. Isn't that cool? He made some of you artists and athletes, good at serving and even good friends. God gave each and every one of us special gifts and he made you special. What makes you special? What makes your mom or dad special? What is something that's so cool about how God made you? God made you in his image and he loves you not this much, not this much, but this much. 
Go out in your yards today and find something so cool that God created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. See, in the beginning, the earth was awash with possibilities. Yet it was void. It was formless. It was dark. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I'm not really a big fan of the dark. So your eyes have to strain just to make out the shadows moving in the background, and your, your ears, well, they start to play tricks on you as you pick up whatever ambient noises are around you. And yet it's at night that one of the things that sparks wonder and amazement within me shows up. The night sky. Now it's a pale version of itself here in the cities, don't get me wrong. And in fact, when I first moved into my home here in Eden Prairie and looked outside for the very first time at night, the sky was ablaze with, well, not, not stars, but with the spotlights from Mystic Lake. So now I don't think that that is what God was creating on the first day when God says, let there be light. I mean, I could be wrong, but it's at least not what makes my imagination fly. So the night sky is a torrent of beauty. The brilliant light of the moon casting ghostly shadows. The chance sighting of a meteor streaking through the sky. Point after point after point of light bursting through the firmament. The time and space those photons have tra traversed is mind-blowing. And after their million-mile-plus journey, they've landed on my eyes and your eyes. But to experience all of that, to see the nighttime sky in, in all its glory, you need just that. For it to be night. For that hidden beauty to be revealed, we need the light of day turned down just a little bit and allow the shadows of night to, to swallow us whole. And so it's then and only then the vastness of creation seems to reduce us to nothingness. But that point of light high above you, that star that sent its light throughout the universe, the amount of time that was necessary for its photons to travel to your eyes. I mean, it's not only vast, but it's intimate. Because you are not alone in seeing that starlight. It also falls upon your sisters, and your brothers. So that's the beauty of God hovering over the waters of the earth at the beginning of day one. There's not much there. It's just formless and empty with a bunch of water. And it seems like it might swallow you whole. But hovering above the waters is the all-divine and loving presence of our Creator God. So that as the psalmist says, God is ready to create you in the secret place. That you are woven in the depths of the earth. Now it reminds me of when my daughter wants to make some sandcastles in her sandbox. It's a, it's a flood of possibilities. Well, it's, I guess it's usually her asking that I create this one single sandcastle time and, and time and time again. And then when I put all this creative work and energy into building this masterpiece, I set it down for her to examine and she looks at it for a couple seconds and then she, she knocks it over. She has a little giggle and she says, Hey dad, can you make this one again? My sandcastle seems to have been knocked down. And I know this is a, a slight tangent, but if you've ever built with Legos, you know, there's a couple different ways that it can be done. You can either buy the specific sets and follow the directions to create a very specific object and that's it. Or you can buy the 1000 piece Lego crates and just build whatever it is that, that you like. Now my wife would say that I'm bad at following directions when it comes to building things. I just say that everything happens to come with extra parts. I mean, I guess we'll never know what the answer is, but I'd much prefer to let the creative parts of my brain flow uninterrupted toward whatever seems to be the new creation that day. That's the beauty of, of a sandbox. You don't have to build the same thing day in and, and day out. Unless, I guess, you're a, a toddler. But you're only limited by your own creativity. 
that each time Hazel does come out here, she makes something new, something that's never been made before, something that has her fingerprints all over it. Do you mind if we take a walk? It's, it's really twofold. One, I don't really think I can sit here much longer. And two, we're gonna go on a journey. We're gonna go find us a lake or a pond or a marsh or something, a, a marker or a sign of God's presence around here. Because the story of creation doesn't end when God announces that creation is good after day six. God hovering over the formless earth, well, it changes everything. Creation begins in that moment and creation hasn't stopped ever since. From that moment, the pages of the Bible begin to be filled with stories of new creation, stories of new hope and new love that is fresh every day. See, the story of God continues far beyond the pages of Genesis chapter 1. And so does your story. See, if this pandemic has shown us anything, it's that we're in this together. How fast and how frequently the virus spreads depends on our actions as a community. It really comes down to how much we're willing to put others before ourselves. Now, that idea was put into practice at Prairie Lutheran this past Wednesday. For the second time during this pandemic, Prairie Lutheran has hosted a blood drive through the American Red Cross. Now, in normal times, this wouldn't be anything too significant. Prairie has a rich history of hosting blood drives. Now, I've signed up for these in the past online, and typically there's a, a good amount of times to pick from meaning that the people looking to give blood isn't significantly high. But for this blood drive, well, I went to sign up the other day and just a, a day or two after registrations had opened and the blood drive was already full. The response from this congregation and the community was so overwhelming. But the limited number of spots that the Red Cross had available had already filled up nearly instantaneously. There was a need and the community stepped up and filled it. It's a beautiful reminder that we are truly in this together. That all of us have our own role, responsibilities and ways that we can impact our community and nation and world in both small and, and large ways. All it takes is one phone call, one letter, one prayer, one word of appreciation, one hot meal, one anonymous or hidden act of kindness to change the world, to bring about that new creation. Because that saying, we're all in this and together, it's not just some stock phrase or, or cliche. Again, read Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. So you are mentioned 27 verses into the Bible because you are created in the image of God. And I'd invite you to say that with me. I am created in the image of God. Let's say that together. I am created in the image of God. But so are your sisters and brothers, even people you disagree with, people you've deemed unworthy, people who don't seem like they're overflowing with that presence of God. But the promise of verse 27 isn't that God's suggesting only some people are created in the image of God. No, the promise is that everyone is created in the image of God. And our challenge as disciples of Jesus Christ is that sometimes we'll have to work past our own human prejudice and ego to fully see it. We finally made it to our spot because there's a pond back here. I'm not lying, there's a weird marsh slash wetland area back here and we're, we're honestly close. During the winter when the leaves aren't around on the trees, you can see it as clear as day from just up on top of that hill where we came from. But it's here. Okay, just go, keep going a little bit closer. Okay, you're doing great. A little bit closer, I promise that this pond thing is right up here. Keep, keep going, you're almost there. Oh, I know it doesn't seem like it. Keep, keep going just a little bit further. A little bit further. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, stop. Woo! I told you there was a, a pond or a marsh or a swampy thing back here. And here's the trippy part. It doesn't matter if it doesn't seem like a pond to you from this vantage point. The only thing I'm asking is that you trust me when I say that there is, in fact, a pond here. 
because go just a, a few feet up in the air and yep there it is so it's a pond it's clear as day there's no question about it and if we're honest it's really the best pond that that's ever been but from down here amidst the trees and the weeds and the mud even though i'm practically standing right in the pond well it doesn't really seem like one from here you need to do two things take the time to look for the pond's presence and then trust that it's there even if you can't fully see it because it's not the pond's problem that you can't see it from right here the problem is your vantage point and even that might not be your fault either and that's where the challenge to all of us enters in we know that we're created in the image of god that's the promise of the creation story that you are created in the image of god the challenge then is recognizing that on a daily basis in every person that we encounter every person whose story we hear about in the news every person we subconsciously judge or deem as less than since i record this on a thursday afternoon i'm still at a loss for words about what the city of minneapolis has experienced these past few days you may have watched the video where george george floyd was pinned to the ground with a knee on his neck as he said please i can't breathe then this past Wednesday night the anger and pain of a people long silenced by society by that ugly grip of racism well it came to life it was heartbreaking to watch the shops around Lake Street burn to the ground to hear the anguished cries of our sisters and brothers as Martin Luther King Jr said a riot is the language of the unheard And what is it America has failed to hear? And has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice and humanity. Those words from Martin Luther King Jr. well they convict me. convict me because I'm white. And given the demographics of the ELCA, there's a pretty good chance that you're white too. I mean 96% of people in our denomination are white. The ELCA is practically the whitest mainline denomination in the whole of the United States. And if we look at our text today, and we truly believe, and I mean truly believe, that all people are woven together and created in the loving arms of God then it is our responsibility as followers of Jesus Christ to trust that promise to trust that our perspective our vantage point might not be the only one because the only way that you can see there's a pond behind me is is, is if i show you if i tell you about it and then if you listen to my story. See, in this time where our sisters and brothers of color who are crying out in whatever language allows them to be heard, our challenge as a predominantly white denomination is to listen. To undertake the most difficult of tasks. To remove our prejudice, our ego, and our labels that our minds want to so crassly place on others and truly listen to their stories. to their heartbreak to the myriad of ways society from the halls of power to people like me and and you have silenced them throughout the generations and we do this not because it's easy but because it's our calling as followers of Jesus we do this because the very presence of God is present in every person The love of Jesus is woven in all creation the Holy Spirit's breath giving life to all creatures and to all people. So on the days where it feels like you've turned your back on Jesus. On the days where you've been blinded by your own prejudice and your own ego and you struggle to find that image of God in your sisters and brothers. On those days remember this. Trust Jesus. 
trust Jesus, trust that Jesus' forgiveness and life and love are expansive enough for all people and yet intimate enough to surround you and clothe you with exactly what you need, day in and, and day out. Trust that the image of God is fully present in all people. Because we're all in this together, literally. All of us are made in the image of our loving creator God, Jesus Christ. And for that reason, each and every day, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. so small like you're stuck inside a crazy dream and no one is you when you try to scream you gotta know you're not alone My name is Miss Melanie and I'm delighted to share this morning's mission moment with you. Vacation Bible School or VBS is a program for kids here at Prairie Lutheran and it traditionally takes place the first week of summer vacation. The goal of VBS is to make Christ known to kids in our area, in our community and 
Although VBS is gonna look a little different this year, the goal still remains. In an effort to keep kids and volunteers safe, we're moving VBS to online. Now this isn't ideal at all, but how does that work through VBS? VBS will still be full of music and crafts and fun. In fact, we're excited that online VBS will open up new ways for many people to participate. Kids that wouldn't normally be able to do VBS will be able to do VBS online. Vacation Bible School will move from a four-day morning event at Prairie to a five-day event that kids can do all summer long. And this theme of Rocky Railway could not be more timely. During VBS, kids will learn that Jesus pulls us through life's ups and downs. Trust Jesus. Here's how VBS will work. Parents and families will purchase VBS kits online through our website. Each kit is $15 and it comes with everything you need to do five days of VBS. It comes with a craft for each day, stickers, a conductor hat, coloring sheets, Bible buddies, and more. After you purchase your VBS kits online, you can drive through to pick them up at Prairie Lutheran, or you can choose to have it shipped to you. Then, after June 15th, when the videos launch, you can watch the VBS videos anytime until August 31st. Kids can watch it on Facebook or on YouTube. And here's a little glimpse at what VBS will look like for kids. They'll go from Sing and Play Express to the Bible Bounce Around game, then to Bible Adventures, Locomotion Games, Kid Vid Cinema, and then Choo Choo Crafts. And they'll wrap up the day with Rocky Wrap Up. And of course, throughout the day, there'll be VBS songs with actions that the kids can follow along to. God has big plans for VBS, and I hope that you and your family are able to join in. Thank you to everyone who's helped out with VBS in the past, and thank you to our congregation for their faithful support. Trust Jesus. Thank you, Melanie, for sharing today's mission moment. Now is the time in our worship service when our hospitality team walks through the aisles and collects the offering. We've not been able to be in the sanctuary now for three months, and yet you are all hitting it out of the park. So thank you for all of your kind and generous and faithful contributions. Today, I want to thank those of you who are doing these walk arounds during social distancing including the many of you who are mailing in your offering to the church through the United States Postal Service. Also, I want to say thank you for all of you who are giving on our online <clears throat> platform. Excuse me. It's accessed by going to our website, www.plc.church.org or something like that, and then follow the instructions. And then finally, all of you wonderful people who are e-givers and are using the electronic gift by making sure you your contributions are routed to the PLC account. We are so blessed as a congregation. Each week, you share your finances with the church to help make Christ known. Thank you. Join me now for the prayers of the church as we lift up all those who stand in need. Join me now for the prayers of the church. Gracious God, every day you greet us with your creation. You made all that exists, and we have been blessed to live in its splendor. In this time of growth, we witness the finery of budding leaves, the aroma of flowers, the chirping of birds. Thank you for beauty and majesty all around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you create in us the ability to see beauty in every living thing. Help us to open our eyes to our enemies to see you there as well. It is easy to take sides and divide our world into us versus them. Help make us instruments of peace and the makers of a new creation of forgiveness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, you have hope and healing that is constant. This week, we lift up these people for your prayer and your healing. Mason Linscott, Derek Agate's mother Maudlin, Stephanie Stiles, Linda Rhodes. In our pain and grief, hold us close and remind us of the promise of new life we receive in Jesus. And this day we also lift up those we now name in the quiet of our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy and might, we pray for our first responders, doctors and nurses, health care and retirement care workers, grocers and truckers, police officers and firefighters. There are so many people who quietly and courageously put their lives on the line to help others. Bless them with safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us join our voices together with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning for our Sunday morning digital worship. Although we are not together in the same space physically, the Holy Spirit is holding us together in spirit. So thanks to all of you who are worshiping both near and far. It's fun to imagine everyone who watches around the world and right here in the Southwest Metro. Before we conclude this morning, I have wonderful news to announce to you today. Next week, we are going to worship once again here in person. Yes, let me repeat that on Sunday, June 7th, Prairie Lutheran Church will welcome people to come together and worship in person. Last weekend, Governor Walls issued his latest directive for churches. He gave clearance for up to 250 people to gather outside for an event. And so with that in mind and heart, we are planning to use our PLC parking lot to host our weekly worship service. The altar area will be here where I'm standing right now, and this area in front of me will be set up for our social distancing of worshipers. And so in preparation, here are a couple asks of you. One, bring your own lawn chairs to set up and then take home with you. And two, please wear a face mask while we are here together. The service will be live streamed on Prairie Lutheran's Facebook page if you're not able to attend. And this is, this is going to be great. One way or another, by digital or by drive-in, we are going to worship our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. He is stronger than the virus and closer than the pandemic. Before we conclude this morning, Pastor Joel has an announcement to share with you. Thank you, Bryant. I'm here with a heavy heart. Earlier this week in Minneapolis, our city made national news. On Monday night, George Floyd died while crying out, I can't breathe. It was the tragic death of another American who happens to be black. Since his death, protests have occurred across our nation this week and personal property has been destroyed. It's been a gut-wrenching week. At the heart of all of these horrible events is a virus, not unlike the coronavirus. And this virus has killed untold thousands in the United States. And that virus has a name, racism. Our country is long overdue for a conversation about this virus and a search for a cure. Our first step is to acknowledge that it exists and to address our role in its spread. This morning, I invite you to join me here in our parking lot for a time of prayer and confession. With appropriate social distancing, we'll talk with God and ask God to take this burden to sin, this virus, away from our hearts. Perhaps we can each begin to be first responders with our own words, our prayers, and our actions. Join me here in an hour. Thank you. Now I invite Brian to offer our benediction. And now for the last time, completely and wholly online. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me now for our final song. Trouble see. 
troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you all. You will get